Hello, I'm Mr. Barr. I haven't made a video in a while, so we'll see if I remember how to do this. I'm going to talk to you about equations for linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. The most important two for right now are linear and exponential, based on the Common Core standard that we're working on. All right, so here's the table. And hopefully you've already watched the other video that shows how to look at a table and determine if it's linear or exponential. So I'm going to come through here. I'm going to first check my differences. So 1 to 3 is a difference of 2. 3 to 9 is a difference of 6. Okay, this is obviously not linear at this point. So now I'm going to look at my ratios between them. So the ratio from 1 to 3, that's 3 over 1. So it went up by 3. And 9 to 6 means it also is a 3 to 1. It went up by 3. So I have this ratio of 3. Each time it's going up by 3, it's going 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. It's going up by a factor of 3 each time. So this is looking like an exponential. So how do I use that information to build an equation in this form? I'm looking for something that looks like y equals a b to the x. Well, b is this ratio. This ratio up here is b. So I know that b equals 3. I can put that right here. Now, what is, the question is, what's a? Well, a is actually the y value right here. Think about this. If x is 0, 3 to the 0 is 1. 1 times what would give me 3? So this is 3 right here. What I'm basically doing is I'm, I'm plugging in this point, the 0, 3 point. Let's plug that in. What would a have to be in order for this to work? 3 equals a times 1. What does a have to be? a is 3. So a, the a value is right here. The a is the y value when x is 0. So a equals y at x equals 0. So my final equation on this is y equals 3, 3 raised to the x. OK, so that was an exponential. Let's look at another one. And I've forgotten what this one is, so I'll have to figure it out with you. There's my table of values. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's see what's happening right there. It dropped down by 30 right there. Uh, it's not dropping down by 30. OK. Already, I've ruled out a linear. Let's see what's going on with these ratios. Negative 45 over negative 15 is 3. Negative 135 divided by negative 15, no, excuse me, negative 45 is also 3. So I know that my ratio is 3. So that means my B value is 3. And I'm off the screen. There we go. Now, once again, how do I find that A value? Well, you know, there's another way to do this. Here, how about this? Y equals A, B to the X. We could plug in any of these values here for X and Y and solve for A. Actually, I like that idea. Let's do that. Let's plug in X and Y. Y is negative 15 equals a, my unknown, 3 raised to the first. Let's solve that. 3 to the first is 3. Divide both sides by 3. Looks like a is negative 5. I like that method. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm sitting here planning out for this video, and I had this other method kind of planned out right here. Here's my paper, my kind of notes. Yeah. It's really... Can you read? Can you read that? Ah, it's kind of messy. 
And then I start doing the video and I come up with new ideas. So I like that idea better. So you get that ratio, which is your B value, plug it into the equation, and then put in values for X and Y and solve for the A. Does that make sense? Okay, so what's my equation? Y equals negative 5, 3 to the X. And does that work? I'm checking it. If I put a 2 here, 3 squared is 9 times negative 5 is negative, times negative 5 is negative 45. This seems to be working. This would be 27 times negative 5. Is that right? 27 times negative 5. Negative 135. That's good. I like that method. Woo! I learned something today. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, what's going on here? It went up by 10. It went up by 10. It went up by 10. This is looking very linear to me. Is it looking linear to you? It's looking linear to me. And I'm going to go back to that idea of plugging in an X and a Y. So here's what I have. I have Y equals MX plus B. There's my linear equation in slope-intercept form. I know the slope is 10 right there. It's kind of funny. That's M. How the B is different in the exponential. Okay, this, so I have Y equals 10X plus B. And if we plug in a value for X and Y, any of these, do you care which one? No, let's go, with, let's go with that one. We'll plug that in for X and Y, X and Y, and get B. So I get B equals 2. I'm off the screen again. Do that math. B equals 2. So my equation is going to be Y equals 10X plus 2. And then our final one. Okay. This one. If I go through the differences, the differences, I'm not going to do this whole thing. The differences are not constant. If I check out my ratios, ratio, 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 the ratios are not constant. If you watch the other video, you could see there's like this subset of differences. Bottom line, this is going to be an, a quadratic. I'm not really focused on quadratics that much, but if you want to do it, y equals ax squared. Plug in a value for x and y, solve for your a. Let's put a 5 in. We'll put this in. Negative 5 equals A. Writing both sides by 25. It's going to give me A equals, what's that, negative 1 fifth, which is negative 0.2. Once again, I'm off the page. So what I could do is y equals negative 0.2x squared. Once again, I'm not right now I'm not super focused on the quadratic, identifying quadratics off of these and making um, making an equation. Okay, thanks for watching. Sorry that got a little bit long. Bye.